Emily Miller of the Washington Times joins us. How are you, Emily? I'm great. How are you doing? I am good. Listen, this is an amazing story that you've uncovered. Uh, well, I mean, I have to say I'm, I'm not happy about having uncovered it. No. I have been asking the police department for nine months for their involvement in getting these illegal guns for Diane Feinstein into D.C. and have been refused answers. Um, and I've put in several FOIA requests. The final one is four months past due. They finally gave me partial emails only to uncover that the D.C. police department, instead of actually going after criminals, was spending enormous amounts of resources procuring illegal guns for Dianne Feinstein to display at a press conference and then hiding it from the press, working with the Capitol Police and the Sergeant Arms Office on Capitol Hill to make sure those of us who work in the media don't find out about it, and then to find out that when I sent an email, two emails, I should say, to Police Linear Spokeswoman and asked for more information, instead of replying to me with the more information, she sent them to the chief, and the chief sent my emails to Chief Ramsey of Philadelphia, the Sergeant at Arms, Terry Gaynor, and a lobbyist, all of them to complain about the fact that the press actually knew about what she was up to. Yeah. And it's just, it just it, it infuriated me to re- get this stuff more than anything else. Emily, I, and I, I don't blame you one bit. Uh, you know, as you say, you've been waiting months and months for this, and clearly, uh, well, I shouldn't say clearly, but... Uh, it seems pretty apparent to me they didn't want you to have this because it's really damaging. Well, the FOIA laws are they have to respond in 10 business days. Mm -hmm. So after 10 business days, this was in May, I said, you haven't responded. So then they have this new thing where they say, oh, well, we can extend it for 15 business days. So they send me that document. And then after 15 business days, I replied, you haven't responded. After a week, another week, I replied, I replied. They never send it, and they finally send this stuff. Then they say, this is out of 26 things I asked for, this is three of them. That's how much they're hiding this. And, um, and and then some of the emails also were blacked out, especially the ones after complaining about me. That was blacked <laughs> out. <laughs> but, um, you know, it just it's, it has so much, you know, first of all, it just shows you that this, you know, the local police department is obviously in the can with the anti-gun folks and trying to convince the public that, a, that there's a need for an assault weapons ban. I mean, that's part of what this is all about. Yep. Um, and trying to push gun control. And then... But also the other part of this is a complete hiding. I mean, they, they, first of all, they don't abide by the Second Amendment in the city, or in this country, I should say, on the federal level when you ask Dianne Feinstein. But what about the First Amendment and freedom of the press? I mean, they're not going to let us know what they're up to. So instead, they're going out of their way to and contrive, both on the federal level and the, and the city level, to not let us know that they are giving illegal guns to Dianne Feinstein. And then a week later... Republican senators Cruz and Graham asked for help in getting asked both the Capitol Police and the Sergeant Arms Office and the D.C. Police for help getting just one legal gun, one rifle, and one AR-15 into a hearing, and they were not allowed to do that. And then just for me to read in these emails that um, Senator Feinstein's staff forwarded the story of the Republicans not being allowed to bring in the guns to the D.C. police and mocking them and saying, look, look, that what they couldn't get and we did. Yeah, let, let's talk about that. Mr. Uh, Tom Mincer, uh, Senator Feinstein's press secretary, uh, sends this uh, email to the head of the uh, Crime Scene Investigation Division, uh, Keith Williams, and says, I was gratified to hear Senators Cruz and Graham complaining that getting weapons into their hearing today was unworkable. Uh, I find you guys entirely practical for the record. Now, Emily... That that suggests to me that the, that the Metropolitan Police Department, the Washington D.C.'s Police Department, uh, was actively engaged in in the political process here, uh, assisting Senator Feinstein and and setting up roadblocks for Senators Cruz and Graham. That's right, and you know also it didn't fit because with newspapers you've limited word space, but Senators Graham and Cruz also asked the Sergeant at Arms, Terry Gaynor and the Capitol Police for help in bringing these two weapons, because they own the weapons. It right. wasn't a matter of getting the weapons. They own them. At, Senator Graham has an AR-15. So that wasn't the issue, and I guess somebody on the staff has a hunting rifle. So it's not only the D.C. Police. It's the Senate Sergeant Arms and the D.C. Capitol Police, all of whom I have emailed all helping between Feinstein's office, helping Brian Feinstein bring 10 illegal guns that she thought looked scary because they are involved in any kinds of mass shootings in the past, but refused to help the senators and the senators, the Republican senators. So they 
complained about it. I wrote a story at that time. They were saying they would not, they were not allowed by any of the three law enforcement agencies to do this, and this was so unfair. And then to see, not only did they not help, but to see the Democrats actually mocking them behind the scenes. I mean, these are elected officials, and it's this and Tom Menser, the spokesman for Dianne Feinstein, is a taxpayer-funded staffer mm-hmm. mocking that another senator was not allowed to do the illegal things that Dianne Feinstein was allowed to do. So I'm, I'm curious, Emily, are you going to follow up with uh, Senator Cruz or Senator Graham's office at all now that uh, I have, this, and, you yeah. know, at that, this, they, you know, they are, they are pretty outraged, and I think I'm following up on several points. I mean, first of all, uh, Chairman Issa's committee in Congress has oversight of D.C., so I think there really is look opportunity here for some sort of oversight hearing of what is going on between the D.C. police, who for who let off David Gregory, the NBC anchor, for even though he no, knowingly had a 30-round magazine in the city, and they let him off. And in the emails, you can see that both Diane Feinstein and Chief Lanier were worried they would have another David Gregory if the press found out about this. So they're letting off people, they're enabling, I should say, people like Dianne Feinstein and David Gregory to break the law. Chief Lanier is doing that. Mm -hmm. While at the same time, A, not fighting the increased violent crime in the city, and also conspiring to make it impossible for Republicans, or I should say not even Republicans, but anybody who opposes more gun control laws, to demonstrate to the public the facts of gun control. So I think that Chairman Issa's committee could very well hold oversight committees. I'm appealing all of these FOIA requests that have been refused to me to the mayor's office and then looking into taking this to the courts because that's the only way they will release this information. And thirdly, and I posted this on um, on, on the comments under my story and on the NRA's Facebook page and my Facebook page, the public can join in this. All they have to do is call Chief Lanier and say, answer her Emily's FOIA request. I mean, there, as I said, I've got 26 questions. They've only answered three of them. And I put their phone, her phone number and her email. The, the, I only have the big email, but the phone number is 702-727-4218. And the email is mpd, mpd at dc.gov. And they should say, this is a freedom of press. And this is America, and, turn, and you are under law to turn over these documents. And that, so there's three op- avenues this can go. Talking with Emily Miller of the Washington Times, uh, you know, Emily, what about oversight from, don't laugh when I ask this question, by the way, what about oversight from city council? Uh, is, right. there, is there any chance of the city council uh, looking at this and saying, you know, we, we, this is, at, at best, this would be unprofessional? Um, well, I, I, I agree. Like, in theory, right. if we had it, I know, but the city council are the ones who wrote the laws, these gun control laws. They're the ones who cr- made this ridiculous law that you can't bring in a gun that has a 30 round magazine, or you can't bring in a gun that has a pistol grip. So it's those laws that Lanier is enforcing, or not enforcing in the case of Diane Feinstein and David Gregory. So they're, they're not going to get involved. What's so, so outrageous about all this, going back to the David Gregory part of this story, is I FOIA'd the mayor for any contact he had when they decided to let off David Gregory and not prosecute him. And yeah. he, he has proclaimed that he has attorney-client privilege with the district attorney of Washington and is refusing to turn over documents. <laughs> he, you can't have attorney-client privilege between a public, two public office holders. It's a private, unless, he's, unless Mayor Gray is being charged with a criminal a crime, which he's not, he does not have attorney-client privilege. So the way the, the FOIA works in D.C., you FOIA the agency, and then if they reject you, which happens, you can appeal to the mayor. So I can't appeal the mayor to the mayor, but I can appeal the MPD and all these other things on David Gregory. And then ultimately, we have to take it to court. Unbelievable. Uh, you know, Emily, this is the way uh, governments act when, when, you know, they're proud of their actions, right? <laughs> Right. That's right. When they have nothing to hide right. and when they're doing they're really serving the public. I mean, it, it, we have serious crime in Washington. And the fact that the police chief is spending this much time and her resources and her officers being told to spend this much time to bring illegal guns into the city for Diane Feinstein to have a press conference on an assault weapons ban that had never had a chance of passing the Senate. And then not only that, we've got the Philadelphia police chief working on this. Mm -hmm. I mean, this whole consorted effort to push for an assault weapons ban, 
when we all know that no, the assault weapons ban was in place for 10 years and it didn't reduce crime. It never reduces crime. It has nothing to do with the functionality of a gun. And that's what Senator Cruz and Senator Graham were trying to show at the hearing, that adding the pistol grip to a rifle does not change how a gun functions. We shouldn't make laws about this. But that's what they don't want you to hear. And let me be clear, this is the police chief. This is Chief Lanier's actions. Her officers, the union, the force, they don't agree with any of this, and right. they don't want any of this, because they've got actual real jobs to do, which is fighting actual criminals on the streets. So they're, they're not being worrying about appeasing these liberal senators like Dianne Feinstein. Well, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, we've talked with uh, some of the guys um, on the, you know, the staff and guys with the uh, police union. Uh, Chris Bauman has been exactly, very vocal yeah. about, uh, you know, the, the, the fact that the, the rank and file don't think the city council, don't think the D.C. government should be wasting their time on all of these gun control laws because it's not the law-abiding gun owners uh, in D.C. or elsewhere who are the problem. Um, and this is a common, and you know this, this is such a common mis- 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 eh, misconception in the public because Obama pushes it and Bloomberg pushes it that the police support their gun control laws. And you, you know very well that Police One poll this spring showed that uh, uh, opposition to more gun control laws among law enforcement, actual law enforcement, not the chiefs, is between 85 and 95 percent. It's 96 percent for the assault weapons ban. 96 percent of 15,000 law enforcement in this country oppose an assault weapons ban. And the reason is simple. It's the same reason we were just saying on the local level in D.C., is that these guys have actual criminals they want to go after. So going after someone because they have a cosmetic something on their gun is a complete waste of their time, and they don't get the resources they need. But when you Obama gets these police chiefs like Ramsey, like Lanier, to stand behind him at press conferences and say, we are pushing for more gun control, just as recently as after the Navy Yard shooting a couple weeks ago they're doing this, and giving the impression to the public that the police want more gun control laws because they think it will make the cities and country safer, and that's just absolutely not true. Absolutely. Listen, Emily, appreciate everything you're doing there in uh, D.C. And uh, let us know when you want to come back. Let us know when you got some more details for us. Thanks for the help. Absolutely. Emily Miller joining us for the Washington Times.